Hi everyone, welcome to Rose Hip Knits podcast, episode 19. My name is Hannah and you can find me as Rose Hip Chick on Ravelry and on Instagram. I'm spinning today <laughs> and as you can see we're back inside our house and this is where I actually started off podcasting, sitting here in our sort of um, kitchen, dining, living room area. <laughs> we have a beautiful um, big windows in this room and we get a lot of nice natural light in here so that's why I started podcasting here but um, my craft room or the studio which is in a little building outside the house um, that's also quite a, a light room and because I have all my craft stuff out there I started podcasting out there instead but um, today we're back in here because um, I have two little girls um, napping and my five-year-old she has quite a bad cough today so uh, I wanted to stay close by uh, to make sure that she's okay So how are you all? I hope you're all fabulous and you are enjoying the start of autumn or spring here in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, thank you all for joining me today. Thank you for coming back or thank you for checking me out for the first time. I was sitting here spinning actually and I thought, well, I have so much to um, tell you all, so why don't I record? So I got the computer out and here we are. So I think I'll stop my spinning because it's um, going to be very distracting and I don't think I can do spinning and podcasting at the same time very well. So I'll set that aside and I'll get back to the spinning later on. Um, I'll have a sip of tea because, as you can hear, my voice is again a bit funny. Okay, I have my show notes there and you can see them there today. So I've said thank you um, to you all for watching. Thank you for any messages and feedback, feedback on the previous episodes. And thank you for taking part in discussions in our Ravelry group. The Ravelry group you can find just by searching for the Rose Hip Knits podcast in Ravelry under the groups tab. And um, thank you for anyone who's recently joined the group. And also a big thank you for anyone who hit the subscribe button in uh, on YouTube. So yes, I think we have um, over... 500 subscribers on YouTube, which is very exciting. I'm not sure about the stats on YouTube and what that actually means. Um, from what I've heard, there could be a lot of spam and things in that. So, any, anyway, I'm happy for anyone who's watching. So, uh, thank you all. Um, we have had a dialogue going on uh, for this podcast and for our Ravelry group and uh, I'm going to do the drawing for um, two winners today. So we had I think 25 entries, check that, 25 entries in the finished object thread, yes and um, there was everything from natural dyeing, dyeing with food dyes, dyeing with acid dyes for the first time, dyeing sock blanks, dyeing fiber, dyeing hand spun. So um, a large range of different dyeing that you all tried out and it was so great to see it all and I really enjoyed um, everything you tried out and um, I got inspired to try a few things too 
<laughs> so thank you everyone for joining and I'll just do this drawing straight away. I have the random number generator up on my phone and I'll, um, I'm sorry if this is going to take a bit of time and be a bit weird but we'll do this. It's only, um, I was the first pose so two, two, 26. Two to 26 generate and this is for the first prize which is this bag from knit and stitch bits Katie and the result is 10 so let's check who that was pose 10 was Otisiro who dyed uh, some dip dyeing and made a beanie out of that. And Otisiro is Anneline from Belgium. So congratulations. I will send this bag out to you when you have sent me a PM with your um, posting details. And then... Um, Claire from the New Hampshire Knits podcast, she um, has offered one of her patterns for the Agatha, Agatha socks, Agatha socks, and um, I'll draw another winner and uh, Claire will send a, um, a pattern to that person. So I'll hit generate again. And the next winner was number four. And number four was Mayanna, who did some natural dyeing. So sorry about the glaring from the windows. <clears throat> and Mayanna is Anna from Finland. Don't know why I'm showing you that page. Anyway, they are our two winners. So congratulations and um, thank you so much everyone for joining. It was um, a really enjoyable along and I had lots of fun reading all the posts and um, taking part in um, all the chatter and what everyone had going on. So thank you everyone. Okay, um, I did some dyeing again for as a part of the dye along I guess. I didn't enter of course but I had set myself the challenge of dyeing a gradient. So I did that and um, I might as well show you that now before I start getting into the knitting that I have to show you later and some spinning. Um, because we're talking about the dialogue. So these are the skeins that I dyed up. And I have this skein here as well because this is the same base. And for those of you who have watched it before, watched before, this is the Superwash Merino fingering weight that I dyed for the raindrops jumper that I did for my daughter. It's the tin can it's pattern that I knitted and I have this as a leftover skein from that project and I used it had more of this base just a superwash merino from spotlight <clears throat> that I got for not very much on sale and there was 50 gram balls and I used another 350 gram balls skeined them up and um, made up a dye bath with a bit of mainly purple, but I put a bit of pink and a bit of blue in there as well. Popped in the first skein and left that in for four or five minutes. Put in the second skein. Again, 
left them both there for another four or five minutes and put in a third skein. And when I then felt happy with the colour, I got them all up out of the dye bath and put them individually in bags and steamed them in my food steamer that I use for dyeing. And I am very happy with the result. And my plan is to um, knit a shawl out of these. It's not the softest base. So I don't think I want something that's like a cowl or anything that's going to be too close to my neck. But I think that would be nice in a shawl. So I think I'll, I'll do that when I can... I'll do that when I find a pattern that I think will work for 150 grams of fingering. I could also use this with them in some way. They all look quite, quite nice together. So I'll just see if I find a pattern or when I find a pattern I'll use those. So that was my dying for this dialogue. That was my challenge. <clears throat> Sorry, had to have a bit of tea there. Okay, um, I'm not sure how long I'll have or how long the girls will be sleeping, so I'll um, I'll get on with my knitting and I'll show you something I've finished, a few things that I'm working on, and then I'll move on to some spinning. So my finished project is this shawl. And it's big. <laughs> so this is a shawl by Caroline of the Sasu podcast and Sasu Yarns. Um, I did this as a test knit and uh, the pattern has still not been released. I think Caroline is still working on some charts and um, some tweaking of the pattern. I used um, the Green Grignasco Bambi, which is a extra fine merino, and this one in the 184 colorway, and I found out both that this is now um, discontinued and that it is a three ply. So I ran out and. Um, because of how the pattern works and how the, you do your contrast colour here, you meant to only have the contrast colour down here, a, bit, a few rows further down than this colour. Anyway, um, how the colour goes into the main colour here is what sort of meant to happen down here. But I wanted, when I changed the colour, I wanted that to happen. So I had to tink back a few rows after I realised that I was going to run out of the main colour before the pattern told me to change colour. So I ended up having a little bit left, but not enough to get to where I needed to go. So then I had a look at my stash and I think last time I had already started with adding this colour. You can't really see it very well. Oh, here it's a bit better. This is a Vormice Pure in the Sabrina colourway and it's left over from a shawl, scarf shawl that I made, another test knit. <clears throat> I ran out, I completely ran out of that and had to start another colour, a third colour. This is a sock yarn that I dyed um, and I knit that until I completely ran out and I only had the Pico edging left to do and for that I used another hand dyed that I did that was another was this one here that was another test knit shawl that I made a while back and this one here is um, leftovers from a cow so um, I think it turned out great I'm very happy with it and I'm happy that I used up all of this and all of this 
and a bit of this from my stash. And of course, this one had been in my stash since I bought it um, from a D stash. 2008 or 2009, ages ago, and it's just been sitting in my stash. I wasn't too sure what to do with it, so that's all done, and um, it will now be waiting for autumn <laughs> because the weather is warming up here. We're having a beautiful, sunshiny day today, but it's quite windy, so I have doors closed now that we're um, now that I'm recording. But yes, I really like that, but I'm not going to wear it now because it's too warm. <laughs> so thank you, Caroline, for letting me um, test knit that for you. And I knit that on Hiya Hiya 3.5 millimeters. So that was my finished shawl. And after I finished that shawl, I did not have a test knit, so I did not have a deadline for anything. I don't think I had any cows that I was part of that I needed to have something finished for anytime soon. I had some socks on the needles, and I think, oh, and my cardigan that I've been working on for a while. I had those three things on the needles, and I I was just not <laughs> sure what to work on next. So it was so funny. For a couple of days there, I would like, do two rounds on socks and then two rounds on another, the other pair of socks. And then I'll start a bit on my card again. And I'll, I'll go back and forth a lot between the projects. And I didn't have anything that I was really taken by. And I could, like, I just wanted to keep knitting on. But, um, I decided that I, I wanted to take time to get going on my praline cardigan a bit. And I have that in my beautiful bag from Katie All Knit and Stitch Bits. I also donated the bag for the Dale Dye Along. So this is the praline cardigan by Gudrun Johnston. And I cast that on quite a while ago. I only did the ribbing. It's a bottom up cardigan. And I'm knitting it out of Sadness Garn Mini Duet. That was in my mum's stash and she gave it to me when I visited her in July. It's a 55% cotton, 45% merino wool. And there's 175 metres per 50 grams. And I think I have eight of these. And I got a little bit done on this. You can see this is what they call the little little birds texture pattern. And I have my little stitch marker there from Winemaker Sister. And here I have a stitch marker from um, Andy of Andre Sunits Turtle. And I have some of my little simple um, Stitch markers by Shayton Design. It's in Australia. I'll try to link to all those if I remember. Sometimes I've got those links that are just like little mentions. Anyway, I got to be done on that. I'm now up to where you put in the pockets. So again, I had to think a bit, so that stopped me from continuing. <laughs> But that's that card again, and I hope I will have enough yarn for that. I'm knitting that on shy shies, higher highers again on 2.75 millimeters, and I can fit all of that in this huge bag. <laughs> Um, so I did that, and then I um, have my two pairs of socks that I'm working on. The other pair, the first pair of socks that I'm working on are the Agatha socks by Claire of NH Knits. 
which was the price as well for the dialogue. And um, I need them both together on the one really long needle that I showed you last time. And then I just got to a part in the pattern when I needed to change where the beginning of the row was. So how the pattern works, I decided to separate into two needles. And um, that's how far I've come. Another one of the Winemaker Sisters stitch marker. Sheep. And I'm making these out of the Regia Tweed, which is um, what Claire used for one of her samples. And I had had this in my stash for just a little while and I was waiting for a nice textured sock pattern that I could use it for. And I thought this would be the perfect thing. So... Um, the only other, I'm using two millimeter needles because of the stitch count of the pattern. I just thought that would be more, most likely to fit my feet. And the only other two millimeter needle I had when I wanted to do them and as two separate, on two separate needles, were these ones, pony two millimeter ones. And I have only done two or three rows with those, and I'm not sure how I feel about them. So far, it's okay. So we'll see how we go. So that's those socks. And the other pair of socks that I am working on, I have a pile of things here. <laughs> Sorry. On my uh, Chasing Eight corn bag. This bag is just one I made myself. And they are my Opal Surprise socks that I need to cuff down on my nine inch circulars and I don't have the ball band for this here but it's the opal surprise it's the yarn I'm knitting them in two different nine inch circulars and I sort of do one color on one sock then I do the same color on the other sock and I go back and forth like that a bit and I got to where the heel where I wanted to have the heel and was thinking a bit about how to do it before when I have used these needles I have done an afterthought heel but um, I was I wanted to try something different because I was I didn't want to weave in all those ends at the end so I actually swapped over to my knit pro novas and did a fish, fish lip kiss heel, heel. So first I did it on the one sock and then on the other sock and then I just transferred over back over to the nine inch circulars and I'm continuing on that. So hopefully when it comes to the time when I'm close to starting the toe I'll just transfer them over again to the, the longer circular needle and I can try them on and um, decide where to put the toe. So these are just a good project for travelling and just having around for when I can do just a few rounds. When the girls are in the bath or if I'm in the kitchen cooking or just have a few moments of waiting for something. These are good. So those were the three things that I had on the needles when I finished the shawl. And they were the, I had those things for a few days. And um, then Holly of the Swift Knit podcast mentioned that she had a new shawl design and I volunteered to test knit that for her and I just got that pattern a couple of days ago and she's doing a shawl with three different weights lace fingering and DK weight and I 
um, test knitting to DK weight. And I have this in a huge bag that I made with my mum. I think mum mum made it really. I was watching her doing it. But I have it in that large bag because what I'm using is this Bella Baby Lay It, which is 80% bamboo, 20% wool. And um, I bought this as a spotlight and I I was thinking I was going to make a cardigan for my five-year-old, but I just don't think that's going to happen. And I, because it's on this um, like cardboard or the rolls that it's wound on, because it's on that, it takes a huge amount of space in my stash. And I thought. It would just be nice to use it up for something nice. So I have quite a few of those and they take a lot of room. So they're in this huge bag. But the shawl is in the little bag. <laughs> and I only started this yesterday. And um, this is what it looks like so far. So I think it would be nice. It's beautiful, nice and soft. It's quite heavy because of all the bamboo content. Um, I think it will be quite large and quite heavy, but it will be soft and beautiful and um, like a little wearable blanket almost, I think. <laughs> and I've seen the finished um, shawl that Holly made and it looks beautiful. So I'm very happy to be test knitting this. I'm using my higher highs again, 4.5. No, sorry, these are Addies, 4.5 millimeter needles so that's something I just started so that's my new deadline knitting I guess and now I always know what to <laughs> prioritize so I won't be so confused anymore with my knitting I have my short to prioritize I have some easy vanilla socks for traveling and on the go knitting I have my Agatha socks for something more of an interesting sock and um, I have my cardigan for when I, I feel like a challenge <laughs> so that's um, my knitting that I have been working on the dyeing I have been doing and um, I'll take a sip of tea So, um, I had a little break after I finished talking about my knitting and I made myself a fresh cup of tea and um, just doing a little bit of spinning because it's so tempting when I have my wheel right here. But I'll um, tell you a little bit about my spinning. I um, have not been doing spinning for quite some time because I had decided that I wanted to watch the um, crafty class that I had bought, the worsted to woolen spinning. And um, after I'd finished my test knit, I um, found some time to start watching that class. And I watched a short forward and short backwards crafting, I think they're called, the first two things they talk about in the class. And that's how I have been drafting when I have been spinning since I started spinning a few years ago. And um, I watched that and took note of a few things that I thought, oh, that's something that I should improve. And um, decided to spin one of my braids from my stash using those two methods, oh, using the forward, short forward drafting method and then move on and watch the rest of the, the crafty class. So I have watched that and now I am spinning and what I am spinning is this braid and I only have this much left. This is the first bobbin that I have completed. I have about 90 grams total and this is from Wertha Fibre, I 
think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not sure. Um, and this is a braid that I bought at the Bothwell Spinning before my five-year-old daughter was born. I went there on my birthday one year. <laughs> and um, the Bothwell Spinning is a um, event that happens every second year in Bothwell, Tasmania. And um, they have stores, they have, I think they have workshops, they have a longest thread competition and some exhibitions and things. Back then it was quite a large event. I'm not sure if it is as large anymore. But worth at Fiber, they were there or she was there, Helen, um, I think her name is. And I bought this, which is a blue face Lester. And I have 90 grams of that. And this is the first time I spin BFL and I have never knit anything out of BFL. Um, so since this has been in my stash since 2008, 2009, it's not in the best shape because since then I have moved twice and I had all my stash in storage for about 18 months at one point and then it's been in plastic bags and it's been safe but it, everything's been moving around. Of course, temperature has changed and... Um, it is not in the best condition, but it's still fine to spin. It's, it has um, felt a little bit in spots. So I am um, going to finish spinning this bit with the short forward draft method. I don't even know if I'm saying the right <laughs> term for that, but if I don't, I'll put the right, the correct one. In the, on here and um, yes I'll two ply that and um, then I'll continue on and watch the nef next part of that class crafty class and I think that's the um, drafting from the fold and I have done that before when I have been spinning from a fleece um, but the class is really good so far so I really recommend it um, even though I have been spinning for a while and I have been using these methods, um, there's still little pieces of information that I have found really useful and that I have, um, now when I'm spinning, I'm thinking about it and I'm trying to change to um, just optimize my fiber and um, everything when I'm spinning. Another thing that I bought from the same um, people when I went to the Bothwell spinning is this one. Paulworth top and I think jacaranda that says here is that's the colorway so um, I might spin this next for when um, I do a drafting method that requires a top um, and I'm sorry if you can hear my daughter coughing she's now uh, watching TV for a little bit because she wasn't um, comfortable in bed um, so yes, I had those two braids in my stash. They've been there for quite some time. I don't have a really big fibre stash. Um, I have those two from Bothwell from a few years back. And I have um, a couple of braids that I dyed myself. A couple of braids from friends from my knitting group um, in Hobart. Um, so they're also a few years old. Uh, so I'll, I'm going to try to get through that um, stash because, yes, it's not too good for it to be uh, sitting around for so long. Um, because I have been um, on Etsy a lot just looking and there's so many tempting things. Fibre and yarn, so I'll... Um, if I free up some space in my stash, I'll be able to maybe get something new to spin. And um, when I saw the Warrath of Fibres again, I um, or when I found that in my stash again, I was curious if she was still around because I haven't really heard anything or seen anything from her 
stands both well spinning. So I looked her up online and um, it looks like she's still around and going strong. She's been, she has a website and I'll, I'll put the information down here, website and it turns out that just the, like the same day or a couple of days before I found her or looked her up, she joined Ravelry as Worth of Fibre and um, I'm not exactly sure if that's her Ravelry name but anyway she's now on Ravelry and she's also started selling on Etsy and I'll, I'll put the Etsy shop here and um, I was very happy to see that she's also selling yarn I think like in DK and a fingering weight and she has a set color waves it looks like to me that she does on both fiber and on yarn and on her website I could see that she had been to several fiber events lately and um, I think she's a bit low on her stock so she'll be dying up more things and I hope that there will be both yarn and fiber in her Etsy shop there were some beautiful um, tops in the Etsy shop and um, she's in New South Wales mainland Australia I think originally from the UK and she does both Australian grown and wool Australian breeds and some more not as easy to get hold of breeds or rarer ones or Yes, I'm just trying to remember what I read on the website. But anyway, um, considering how long my braids have been in my stash, I'm really happy with them. And I think in a not too distant future, I'll try some more of um, the Wartha Fibre goodies. <laughs> um, Um, that's all I had to talk about today. I um, might go and have some ice cream <laughs> with my daughter because I feel like my throat needs it and I think that her throat need, really needs it. It's a beautiful day outside so hopefully we'll feel well enough to enjoy some time outside and maybe the wind will die off a little bit which would be nice. Um, I um, I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. Uh, I thought I hope the lighting and everything was okay. Being back in this room, I'm hoping next time I'll be back out in my craft room again. And um, another thing that I have been doing that I have not talked about was that I um, started washing a fleece that I received. My um, in-laws actually have a farm with merinos and merino crosses and they had um, a couple of brown lambs last season and um, of course they don't want the brown fleece for their fleece that they sell um, which I think mainly goes to Italian suit makers but I'm not sure. Anyway the brown fleeces are not as popular and they were happy to give them to me. Unfortunately, I did not really have time to process them. So it's been almost a year since um, they gave them to me and now I decided that the weather is warming up. I need to get through those fleeces. So I have, I have two and I have one of them in the process of being cleaned. And I'll, I'll probably talk more about that, maybe next time or in a few episodes time. So. That's something that's coming up. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. I'll, I'll go now and um, let you get on with what you're doing. Um, I don't have a new knit-along or craft-along in mind. Um, I'm happy with any suggestions that you have. And um, we'll think of something if you want to have another along we'll do it so thank you for this time and um, have a great couple of weeks until I see you next time take care everyone bye